Osborne. Okay, Osborne One students. In this video today, we're going to be looking at rates, ratios, and percents. Okay, so obviously your heading today, and please write this in your notes. Your heading is going to be rates, ratios, and percents. Lesson three point seven, and be sure and include today's uh, date. Today's date. So. Copy all this in your notes, please. Rates, ratios, and percents. Lesson 3.7. And be sure and include today's date. I'm going to go pretty fast like I always do. Just simply pause the video when you need to. Let's start off by looking at each of these three terms that are given above, okay? Now, first of all, let's take a look at the word rates, okay? Rates. Write this down in your notes, please. Copy this in your notes. A rate is usually a comparison of two numbers in which the word per is used. Please copy that in your notes. A rate is usually a comparison of two numbers in which the word per is used. For example, when you're traveling down the road, we say you're going how fast? Miles per hour. Um,
that in. Please write that in. A car has driven 290 miles on 12.1 gallons of gas. Find the gas mileage. Okay. Well, here we go. Now, of course, pause the video, copy this down, then restart the video. Well, first of all, when I say gas miles, we know gas mileage. We should know what that means. It means miles per gallon. Okay. Now, the word per in mathematics is totally acceptably looked at as like a fraction line. So, miles. My pen is really messing up, so please don't think that I don't know how to write. It's just not working very well. There we go. Miles per gallon. Okay. So, let's put my miles up top, which is 290. And let's put my gallons in the bottom, which is 12.1. And now, with a calculator, we can take 290 and divide that by 12.1. So 290 divided by 12.1 is going to give us, um, I have no idea because I typed in the wrong number. Hold on one second. And I typed in the wrong number again. So at least I'm consistent. 290 divided by 12.1 gives us 23.966. I'm just going to put 24. So approximately... Uh, my miles per gallon would be 24 miles per gallon. There we go. Pretty simple, guys. Okay. Let's try another one. Go ahead and copy this in your notes. A 16-ounce can of soup cost $1.89. What is the unit price? Or sometimes they call it a unit rate. We can use those two phrases interchangeably, okay? So when I say... What is a unit price or a unit rate? Remember, pause the video, copy this down, then restart it. Okay, what it, when I talk about unit price or unit rate, here's what it means. Are you ready? It simply means the cost per one unit. Okay, the cost per one unit. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, watch this. Um, this can has 16 units, if you will, or 16 ounces, in other words. And it costs a dollar eighty-nine. So I want to know what the cost is for one ounce. Okay, cost per unit. So I want cost per per means divide the units. All right. So my cost is a dollar eighty-nine, and I divide that by how many units do I have? Sixteen. So let me get my cell phone out. I wish I had my calculator with me. I don't. It'd be a lot easier. $1.89 divided by 16, 0.1181, now let's interpret this carefully, okay, 0.1181, now remember we're dealing with money, so 0.118, I'm just going to round that to 0.12, or in other words, 12 cents, so that is your unit cost, or your unit rate, in other words, um, 16 ounces cost $1.89. One ounce cost 12 cents. That is your unit price or your unit rate. Makes sense. Always try to write out the phrase with the word per. And then remember, the word per is where your fraction bar goes. All right, moving on. Let's try some problems now dealing with ratios. Okay, ratio is a little more difficult. 50 tulips were tested out of a shipment of 4,500 tulips. Okay, copy this down, please. They were tested for resistance to mold. Out of these 50 tulips, 32 had a good natural resistance, which is good. 18 did not. Using that information, estimate the number of bulbs out of the shipment that will have a natural resistance to mold. Okay, so here we go. Here's what we have. Are you ready? We have our... Here's the information we were given. We tested, now take some good notes please, okay? We tested a total of 50, okay? Resistance.
set up another ratio and set these equal. In other words, if 32 out of 50 had a resistance, then X out of 4,500 will have a resistance. In other words, I don't know. Let's look at it again. If 32 out of 50 had a resistance, then that would equal a blank amount having a resistance out of 4,500. Now you should remember from middle school when two fractions are equal, you can cross multiply. So 50 times X, 50X, cross multiply, 32 times 4,500 would be 144,000. And of course we set those two equal. Okay, when two fractions are equal, you can cross multiply and set them equal. Now we're gonna divide both sides by 50 and we should get 2,880. Divide by 50, divide by 50, x equals 2,880. your answer. So out of if out of 50, 32 had a resistance, then out of 4,500, 2,880 would have a resistance. All right, let's try another one. The rate of exchange is 9,900 pesos for one American dollar, okay? You want to exchange 980 pesos. Um, how many pesos? You want to exchange $980 for pesos, excuse me. How many pesos would this be? Well, let's write down our ratio, okay? We have 9,990 pesos to every one American dollar, okay? Now, to be honest with you, we don't have to do a lot of work with this one, like setting up a proportion like we did in the last problem back here. Um, and doing all that solving because the reason we don't have to is this is just simple multiplication. Look at it, guys. For every dollar, you get this many peso, pesos. For this dollar, you get this many pesos. How many dollars do I have? 980. So simply take 980 times 9,990. Because again, think about it, guys. One dollar gives you 9,990 pesos. We have $980. So if one gives you that much, multiply this by 980 and you will have the correct answer. So 980 times 9,990 and you would get 9,790,200 pesos. And there's your answer. Zero. And again, guys, I do know how to write. Just this pen's messing up. So two, zero, zero. There you go. That's how many pesos you would have. All right. Okay. Hope that makes sense, guys. Moving on. Let's finish up with some percent problems. Okay, and then we'll be done. A group of 15 to 17 year olds were surveyed. The total number surveyed was 992. So the age is this age right here. You surveyed a total of 992. They were asked if they played any type of athletics. 482 said yes. Find the percentage that play athletics. Now guys, think about this for a second. By now we should pretty much have a good grasp on percentages, okay? Think about it. If we had, again we'll go back to our male and female example. If we have 50 students in a classroom, and 25 of them are male. What percentage of the class is male? Well, you would say half, right? Or 50%. Because half the class, well, how did you get that? Well, you said, you said 25 per or out of 50. 25 out of 50. Now, with your calculator, type that in. 25 divided by 50, and you'll get and of course we know to change a decimal to a percent, you move it two places. 0.5 is 50%, we should know this, okay? So it's the same thing here. We have a total of 992 that were surveyed, okay? That goes in my bottom. Now out of that 992, how many said they played sports? 482. So there's your fraction. Take your calculator and type in 482 divided by 900 and 
92 and you will get this right here approximately I'm going to round it it's going to be 0 0.485 487 well I'm just going to say 49.49 now 0.49 move the decimal two places is 49 percent and there we go that's a pretty simple percentage problem okay so how many did not play athletics? What percentage? Well, just subtract this from 100. 51% did not play any form of athletics. Okay, moving on now. That's probably and we're finished. I would like you to copy this in your notes, please. I'll shade this in here. That's red. Please copy this in your notes, students. And we'll circle this in blue over here. All right. Now the red segment obviously represents recycled glass. Okay, 29%. Not recycled is 71%. Okay, now 3.2 million tons of glass was recycled. How many total tons of glass were collected? Now, if you'll think this through carefully, you'll be fine. Okay, let me help you. This is a pretty, this is a pretty challenging problem, all right? 32 million tons of glass were what? I mean, 3.2 million, they were what? Recycled, correct. So it would be right for me to say 3.2 million goes with what percentage? 29%. I can say that. That's totally fine to say, okay? Because what percentage was recycled? 29. How many tons was that? 3.2 million. So they go together. Now, we're trying to find out how many tons of glass was collected total. So up here is my amount of glass, right? So I'm looking, if if 3.2 goes with 29%, then X would go with 100%. How do you figure, Mr. Earhart? Well, think about it. The question is not, are you listening? The question is not how many total tons of glass was not recycled, 71%. It says how many tons of glass were collected altogether. So in other words, this entire circle adds up to how many millions of tons of glass, the entire circle. So I'm saying if 3.2 million goes to 29%, then the total number I'm looking for has to be made up of 100%. And now we can do our multiplication and solve, okay? Now, don't forget, please, um, percentages should be written with decimals. So 29% is the same thing as 0.29. 100% is the same thing as 1.00. And 1.00 is just 1. So here we go. 0.29 times x is 0.29x. 3.2 times 1 is 3.2. Now with your calculator, divide both sides by 0.29. So here we go. This cancels, leaving you with x. Let me grab my handy dandy calculator here, and we have 3.2. 3.2 divided by 0.29. And we're going to get this for an answer. 11.0344, etc. So I'm going to round it to 11. So your answer is 11 million. Remember, this number right here is in what? Do you remember? It's in millions. Look right here, 3.2 million. So when you get this out, it's in millions. So 11 million tons of glass was collected. 11 million tons. Out of that, what percentage was recycled? 29%, which was 3.2 million. All right, and that's it. Guys, this is a tough problem. I really hope that it makes sense. Back it up and watch it again if you need to. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.